Today's segment series is going to be about how does a gas furnace work. Uh, we happen to come across a gas furnace uh, with an installation that we recently did and uh, we've taken it apart so there's some bonus material in there in that we also point out uh, uh, what causes a furnace to go bad as well. Uh, there's, we actually found some, uh, some minor cracks that had formed in this particular furnace. So uh, stay tuned, uh, we think you'll find this video very interesting. Okay, what you're looking at here is a uh, basic residential furnace. You basically uh, have your gas valve right here. This is basically what's called a combustion blower. Uh, and its sole purpose is to uh, draw the flue gas, basically push the flue gas out through this device. And uh, this particular model blows the flue gas back through the blower and back up, back up through the unit. Uh, this was uh, for a horizontal application and, because it would be, uh, it's basically a, a downflow because basically, uh, There'd really be no way to hook your flue pipe up uh, if you put it in, uh, put it in as, a, as an upflow because your blower would be going the wrong direction. And uh, basically how a gas furnace works is you've got your heater box here. you got your burners here and you're, you're basically your gas comes in through here via, you know, when you're, you've got a control board. Control board looks something like this. That's basically what operates the uh, air conditioning, the heating, so on and so forth. And there's a multitude of these kind of boards. You know, typically, you know, only you know one, only one or two is going to work with one specific furnace. So you can't really mix and match. You've got to go back with the identical part. Otherwise, nine times out of ten, something will not work. Uh, and uh, manufacturers like to make them, uh, you know, specific to the equipment because in that way they get part money. But anyways, uh, there's uh, this is a uh, a uh, an 80% gas furnace, meaning that it's got electronic ignition. This is a carrier carrier uh, furnace. And uh, it was made in 1994, so it's about 20 years old. It's not in bad shape. This was basically uh, replaced uh, because the uh, customer was wanting to go to a high energy efficiency uh, air conditioner. And then in order to get the high efficiency air conditioner, you got to replace the furnace. So that's typically how I got it. But as it turns out, you'll see... Uh, that it wasn't a bad thing that uh, this uh, particular customer uh, decided to upgrade the furnace. So you got your combustion blower here. Mode of operation is typically the blower. The blower will kick on first, and basically all that does it just clears gas. If there's any gas buildup, it's a safety uh, device to where it kicks on the blower. Another thing too is if the furnace isn't working, that blower will kick on and get you nice and chilly to make you want to uh, fix the fix the gas heat because otherwise that blower is just going to keep blowing on you making you feel cool so that's another thing the manufacturers like to do they like to freeze you out and make you want to fix that furnace rather than try to run it so uh, with that said mode of operation blower typically will kick on first run for like maybe oh usually 90 seconds maybe two minutes and then the uh, combustion blower will fire off and um, as long as the pressure switch is made it sends that signal back to your circuit board and then initially initializes the uh, hot surface igniter down here once that gets nice and red and hot then the gas valve will energize and it will blow gas through your uh, propulsion burners, jet propulsion. It basically looks like a little fighter jet, you know, in there, nice blue. Um, and then you've got your rollout sensors here. These are basically rollout sensors. It's got a flame sensor uh, right down in there uh, to where if it doesn't detect that flame, then it's going to shut off. So if you've got something clogging, you got something clogging this port, and uh, there's no flame in that port, it will shut down the whole furnace. 
and uh, and then you've got your your high limit here. Uh, you never want to uh, jumper jumper your limits. You never want to jumper them because they're there for a reason. You know they're there to protect that protect you and protect that dwelling from burning down. There's all kinds of uh, fires, you know, mentioned, you know, in the winter time. So you want to be sure that your furnace is uh, properly maintained and that the safeties aren't jumpered out uh, because that can lead to a, a house fire. So uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to take this further apart and show you uh, exactly how the heating system works, give you a better understanding of it. Okay, here we got the uh, the combustion blower, or otherwise known as the uh, inducer motor, taken apart. So, pull this thing out, and you can see that it's got like a little squirrel cage uh, wheel in there. Motor spins around. That's what draws. That's what draws the flue gases in through this port here and shoots them up through your flue, right back up in there and out, out through the roof. Just so you can see down in there uh, prior to me taking the rest of it apart. Okay, here we are with the uh, the flue uh, stuff all pulled off. This is where the flue gas comes out, comes into that box. The box is right here. And uh, it was on there like that. Your uh, combustion blower mounted right here, blew the flue gas through, up through the flue. So, just so you can follow how I've taken it apart. And so you can see there's rust down in there and it's held together with screws. Screws were all tight, you know, so there was nothing uh, really to report. And then uh, you can see down here how your, how the flue, or how the gas shoots in. It's all mounted with screws, similar fashion. So now I'm going to take the uh, individual heat exchangers off and show you show you how many cracks I found in uh, in each of the uh, in each of the uh, heat exchanger uh, uh, fingers. Okay, here we've got all the uh, heat heat exchanger uh, fingers. You know, because the heat exchanger is nothing more than a glove with fingers in which the uh, the flames shoot through and the there's holes in the tips of the fingers in which they conjoin together to form the flue which goes up through your roof. Now to show you the difficulty in trying to find these cracks now some of these cracks are like really really fine and I had to I basically had to circle them because you really you really can't tell. You'd have to be looking at it. I don't know if I can even get it to show up at an angle, but trust me, there is a hairline crack where that cert where that marker is circled around. There's a hairline crack, and you'll see it because it's in each of the. It's more pronounced as we go on. This is the next one. Again, you're probably not going to see this one very well with the video because the video just can't, just cannot pick it up for the life of me. It just can't focus on it. It's, it's so fine of a crack, you really can't see it with the video. Now here, you're probably going to be able to more see it a little bit better. You can see the crack is more pronounced. And it's still hard to get the camera to focus on it, but uh, that is a pretty pronounced crack. Uh, and basically, you know, when the when the heat exchanger heats up, uh, that crack is going to leak. You know, pretty a pretty good amount of of flue gas, whether it be carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide. It's still you know a crack, and it you know you shouldn't operate the furnace uh, under that scenario. Now this is the same heat exchanger on the other side. You can see that crack pretty good. Uh, let me see if I can uh, put some light on the subject to see if I can uh, get a clearer. Yeah, you can really see it pretty good right there. That crack is circled. I, I circled them to make it easier for me to find them, but it's basically on the same 
pretty much in the same place on each of the heat exchanger. You can see there's a lot of wear on this one. It wouldn't be probably too much longer and you'd have a gaping hole in, in one of these uh, hot spots uh, because that's showing that the, the heat exchanger has gone under a lot of stress in those areas. But there's basically, basically cracks in each one of them. So it was only a matter of time and he's gonna have he's gonna have some serious serious problems. So but as I said, you know, this this furnace is 20 years old. And then here on this side, there's another uh some sort of a crack or rust uh rusting through to some extent. Now these cracks are pretty minor, so I mean this is this is what you this is when you want to find the cracks is when they're small before they do any damage to your health or you know you're breathing a bunch of fumes that you shouldn't be breathing this is when it's good to find them and then uh, stop operating that furnace and uh, and uh, get it replaced and then this is the uh, the final the, the final heat exchanger I don't know how well you'll be able to find the cracks are really Let's see if I can't get the light to shine on it. Let's see if I can't. Yeah, I just can't. Uh, the video just won't pick it up. Uh, and this one had another crack on the opposite side. And you can see right there. So that's one, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, a total of eight cracks in this heat exchanger. So that just goes to show you, you know, what we're up against when we're trying to find cracks out in the field. It's very difficult. It's very challenging uh, because these cracks are way up in the middle of the heat exchanger. And, uh, very difficult to find. That concludes our video segment series on how does a gas furnace work. My name is Ray Austin with Austin Air Company. If you live in the Katy, Cypress, Richmond, Texas areas, you can give us a call at 832-475-6895. Or for more information, you can always visit us on our main website at www.austinairco.com. Thank you. Have a great day.